What's up, guys? In this video, we will be reviewing the concept of equilibrium of structures, and we will also be discussing the different types of forces that our structures may be subjected to. All right, so let's begin. Okay, so equilibrium. Equilibrium denotes a sense of balance, right? So when can we say that our structures are in equilibrium? So a structure is considered to be in equilibrium if initially at rest, it remains at rest when subjected to a system of forces and couples. If a structure is in equilibrium, then all its members and parts are also in equilibrium. Thus, all forces and couples must balance each other. And that means that the summation of forces must be equal to zero, and the summation of moment at certain points or along an axis must also be equal to zero. As discussed in previous videos, here in structural theory, we will be mainly dealing with two types of structures, your plane structures and your space structures. So your plane structures exist on a single plane, in this case your x and y plane, and this is subjected to different coplanar forces and coplanar couples. Right? So for our plane structure to be in equilibrium, we must satisfy the three equations of equilibrium. So we have summation of forces along x, that must be zero, and summation of forces along the y-axis, again, that must be zero, and then summation of forces at any point should be equal to zero. Once these conditions or these equations have been satisfied, we can now say that our structure, our plane structure, is in equilibrium. Now, what about our space structures? So, for space structures, our space structures would exist along three axes. So, this is our x, y, z coordinate system. So, again, this is um, subjected to different forces, as you can see here, and different couples. So for our space structure to be considered in equilibrium, it must satisfy the six equations of equilibrium. So we have the first three, the summation of forces along the different axes, summation of forces along the x-axis, summation of forces along the y-axis, and then summation of forces along the z-axis. So they must all be equal to zero, thus stating that there are no resultant forces acting on our structure. And then the last three, the summation of force or the summation of moments along the three axes, summation of moment at the x-axis, summation of moment along the y-axis, and then summation of moment along the z-axis, they must all be equal to zero so that there are no resultant couple acting on our structure. And when these six equations have been satisfied, we can now say that our space structure is in equilibrium. Now, a distinction that you must remember that is that when dealing with plane structures, you will be only using three equations of equilibrium. But when dealing with space structures, you will be using six equations of equilibrium. So we will be typically using this when we're dealing with our space trusses. And for these three equations, we will be applying this for most of the structures that we will be studying in this subject. For your beams, for your trusses, for your frames, right? Now, as an additional note, there's another state of equilibrium. It is when a body that is initially in motion is subjected to forces that satisfy the equilibrium equations. It will maintain its motion with a constant velocity since the forces cannot accelerate it. Such structures may be considered to be in equilibrium as well. However, in this subject, we will be mainly dealing with structures that are at rest. Alright? So for our next topic, we will be discussing about external and internal forces acting on our structures. So first off, external forces. These are the actions of other bodies on the structure under consideration. So under external forces, we have our applied forces. These are typically your loads. So under loads, you might have your live loads, your wind loads, and so on. So these loads have a tendency to move our structures or to cause translation. 
And these are typically your known values. The next type of external forces that we have are our reaction forces. So, or simply your reactions. So, these forces are exerted by the supports on the structure. So, typically, this is coming from your supports. And what they do is they tend to prevent, sorry, Prevent motion, thus causing or keeping our structures in equilibrium. Now, typically, this is our unknown values. Unknown values, all right. Now, the state of equilibrium or motion of our structures as a whole is governed by these forces, your applied forces, and then your reaction forces. Next, we have our internal forces. Internal forces or internal loadings. So these are the forces and couples exerted on a member or a portion of a structure by the rest of the structure itself. So these forces develop within the structure and hold the various portions together. They always occur in equal but opposite pairs. That means that they cancel each other out. Now, in general, the internal forces acting on a section will consist of your normal force, your shear force, and your bending moment. If these internal forces are to be specified at a point in a member, so the method of sections must be used. As an example here, uh, for example, this uh, used to be a beam. And what we're going to do, we're going to section our beam. So we're going to cut it. So this requires that the cut or section to be made perpendicular to the axis of our member. Now once we have the free body diagrams of each of the segments, we can now place our internal forces. So your normal force or perpendicular to the cut section. Your shear force is parallel to the cut section and then you have your moments that causes rotation. If you'd notice, they are in opposite directions, and also they have equal magnitudes. Now, once we have these free body diagrams, what we're going to do next is we're going to apply our equations of equilibrium to this segment so that we could determine our internal forces. Now, for our sign conventions, uh, so that we could establish the positive directions for our internal forces, so when you cut our structures, when we cut our structures, um, we're going to have the standard directions for the left portion and then the right portion, right? So for the left portion, your normal force is always acting um, um, outwards. So perpendicular to the cut section, your shear must be acting downwards. And the moment is rotating on a counterclockwise direction. And then on the right portion, it will be the opposite direction. So again, your normal force will be acting towards the um, out, outwards or towards the left side. Your shear now is acting upwards. And then your moment now is acting on a clockwise direction. So what happens here is that your normal force causes elongation or causes tension. Your shear force would cause a rotation on a clockwise direction. And then your moments or your couples would cause an compression on top and tension on bottom. So I have a um, something that you could use to memorize this. So positive normal force, it causes, it elongates. Your positive shear force rotates clockwise, and your positive moments holds water. Uh, as you can see, this causes our beam. For example, this is our beam. To have this um, bending diagram. So this causes compression here and then tension here. And then you can hold the water right here. So that's why it says here, hold water. 
All right, so that's it for our discussion on equilibrium of structures, external and internal forces. We'll have another discussion with regards to internal forces when we discuss the shear and moment diagrams for your beams and your frames. So thank you for watching. I hope to see you on the next one.